thank you ever so much. Of course, I wonder how come I'm here just now. But I must say I'm very much honored and very much happy about the care that has been put into um, inviting me by Farad and the organizers meticulously in every detail. So maybe this will result in something too. We'll see what happens. In a way, uh, there are great differences between what I want to uh, convey and what Jonathan in his brilliant lecture did convey. But basically I would uh, say that we are talking about very overlapping uh, phenomena. My perspective here just now is historical. I will refer to Swedish history about psychotherapy. I'm in no ways impartial. I was part of it. I was active into it, hoping and despairing and whatever. And what I tell is very, very subjective. I won't offer you any exact quotations. I will offer you my personal views of what happened nationally uh, during 40 years. I will try to do it in 45 minutes, that's impossible. And that would mean, of course, that I will simplify and I will do other distortions of the truth. Please bear with me. Please also bear with my broken English. And I will try to uh, explain what I may mean if you ask me. So, please help me in that. I call this waiting for the tide to turn. It was originally planned uh, with another speaker, my close friend Hanna, who would have given uh, maybe uh, more hope for the immediate changes than I think I can do. But anyhow, um, I will leave the excuses now and let's go into it. I grouped the things. Um, sorry, there we are. I grouped the things uh, around five years. Of course, you realize um, there is nothing so specific about one chosen year. It's just to have pins to put things on. Um, and um, the first year which could have been 70 or it could have been 79, but I just chose it as 75 here for some reasons, and called it the psychodynamic tide coming in. Sweden, this a bit remote culture in the boundary of uh, the uh, globalized European Union, um, had in 75 some important aspects of this. There were trainings in psychotherapy. There were trainings in psychoanalysis, especially established since quite a long time ago. And there were some trainings in group psychotherapy since a couple of years on a basic type of level. There were also results of tradesmen who had sold family therapy, who had sold psychodrama, who had sold other uh, frames of reference. And Sweden is such a small culture that we are, by necessity, we take things from abroad. We uh, buy them, we rob them, we steal them, and we, uh, whatever we do, try to translate them into our own language and then in the end we try to do better which we usually are not so strong to do but that's our ambition. So we had trainings but we also had deficiencies and special deficiencies, special needs related to psychiatric care. Psychiatric care in Sweden had like you know other Western countries, their fair share of the big asylum uh, hospitals. We had even world records, in a way, in number of beds for 
some of them. We had also beginning of um, psychiatric clinics in somatic hospitals where one would, uh, on a more voluntary basis, offer treatment. But what one could not offer anywhere enough was a decent psychotherapeutic or even humanistic approach to treatment. And this made, uh, of course, a lot of political things to happen. But what might be interesting here is that liberal party initiatives in Sweden brought about a governmental committee which pre presented a very, very full and very, very wise result. It had access to good uh, experts, it had access to money to travel around the world and learn about things, and they could really digest it. And the result of that was that one suggested just in 1975 that there should begin training in psychotherapy besides what already existed. Training should be uh, done by universities. We had at that time six major universities, three of them older, three of them newer, and they should take on the task to offer training in psychotherapy. And training in psychotherapy should be done on two levels. One which was a more general, basic level one. And level one should be spread, it should preferably be something that people working in hospitals, people working in jails, people working in schools, school health, people working in, in churches would be trained on level one, a kind of basic knowledge about psychotherapy and psychotherapy research and so on. They also suggested a second level, which was a specialization level, in, and that was directed towards, on one hand, individual psychodynamic psychotherapy, on the other hand, on group psychotherapy, and on the third hand, on family therapy. You should not have all three of them, you should have one and specialize in that, and you would finally be uh, a trained psychotherapist. They also suggested that these six universities would form um, departments for psychotherapy. They would offer uh, professorships and research uh, possibilities. And all was in total very much in line with the optimistic and, in a way, boundaryless 70s of building up a new welfare state and a new kind of treatment climate that one really would want to have. There were already, of course, when this was presented, contradictory feelings about it. There were those who saw psychotherapy as such, as nothing worth to really strive for. They uh, kept a bit silent because they were not so much in pace with the ethos of the time. But there were also those who would uh, say that uh, why do we need this? We all already teach things like that in psychology departments, in psychiatry departments, etc. So do we actually need something extra? Universities were in a way happy, they were a bit flattered, they would get something new. Hopefully they would also get some extra money. Uh, they didn't get so very much extra money. And from the uh, proposed professors' chairs, nothing happened during the following 30 years. The first one actually came 31 years afterwards. But there were also then among professionals a um, kind of ambivalence about this. Should we have it? Should we not? Is this actually 
a kind of rivalry with what, to some extent, already existed. One of the, of course, stepping, uh, sorry, not stepping, but tumbling stones uh, in these uh, suggestions were the issue of the training analysis, taken rightly so from uh, models of psychoanalytic training. It was also suggested that there should be mandatory training analysis or going into psychotherapy for those who were training in psychotherapy. And how could that be related to other forms of university uh, training, university education? It was very much discussed by the Commission, it was suggested, and it was from the beginning controversial in important aspects. Ten years later, 1985. Um, sorry, this is a bit too generous. There we are. Um, many of the things suggested ten years before had happened. We had actually trainings and we had training departments. Um, they were spread at least in five of the six universities. And they uh, were optimistic and they recruited good students. I uh, must add here that it was also um, demanded that students of psychotherapy should be from a number of professions. One should have a basic care profession, but it could be not only uh, doctors, psychologists, it could as well be social workers, psychiatric nurses, it could be priests, it could be teachers. It was a very inclusive model that was made to uh, become real, whereas trainings like psychoanalytic training was then only for doctors, to some extent psychologists, but no, no others. One got this, it was in place, but nevertheless, the quality of psychotherapy offered in clinical practice was varying, and there was also objections to the clinical practices leading up to a discussion of should there be the kind of stately control and guarantee that one has about medical practice or about being a trained nurse or about other professions under stately control. Should one have similar control over psychotherapists? Should one have, and in Sweden we chose to have, a separate profession of being a psychotherapist? This has been dealt with differently in, I think, all European countries, but we were in 85 choosing the path to have a stately licensing or legitimation, as we, we used the word. So we are, I myself is a legitimated psychotherapist, as well as I'm a legitimated doctor and specialist in psychiatry, and these are in themselves separate professions. Did one really want this separate profession? Again, the contradictory feelings were heightened. Who did want it? Psychologists? Well, uh, depends. Psychiatrists? Oh no, why should we? Psychiatric nurses? Yes, of course. It's our way, actually, to do decent work. Social workers? Yes, but. And so on. 
We had then a development of individual, group, family lines in the advanced training. From the beginning of the building up of these um, psychotherapy units in the universities, psychoanalysts were utterly skilled, they were utterly well prepared for um, taking on the responsibility, which also meant the power. And they were influencing very clearly what was happening. There was no doubt that there was a ranking order where psychoanalytic conceptualizations would be the ideal and the others, group psychotherapy, group analysis, which became my interest, for instance, uh, used to be more or less openly seen as a secondary level um, uh, method, and family therapy a bit too wild, etc. and so on. <laughs> So, the domination of psychoanalytic teachers, administrators within the therapy training also was reflected in what was, um, what was covering departments of psychology, some departments of psychiatry, definitely schools of occupational therapy and some of the social work trainings. And that was also reflected in public health and in services that were given there. There was a growing um, feeling of being oppressed from psychodramatists, from family therapists and from cognitive behavior therapists. And not only the differences in conceptualization and technique, but also the uh, feeling of not being really allowed to develop and to get support and to get research grants, etc. and so on was growing. I'm not so certain that we, because I'm one of them, who were responsible for trainings uh, didn't listen very well or didn't notice very well the revenge feelings. And we also had, of course, stronger revenge feelings from within psychiatry. My psychiatric colleagues who were by principle against any of these changes, and they in a way collected um, arguments for uh, taking over when possible. But that hadn't happened in 85. Since this came about very much as a result of needs in healthcare, the National Board of Health and Welfare, which was the assessment board, the, the state's guarantee for that medical treatment and um, care would be of good enough quality. They were also those inspiring the development of psychotherapy training. So there was a university level training, but which was assessed and quality guaranteed not by university <coughs> chancellor. Of course, there was an invitation for tension between these organizational governmental bodies. But it was also the comparatively small um, resources for university training in psychotherapy that were available they created the fact that private enterprises, foremost among them, psychoanalytic institutes, and we have two of them, that they were given the same status, they were given the right to give university exam, and the institutions we were 
giving group analytic um, education was also given the right to give university level exams because one needed us and because one had the idea that what we were doing was good enough. It was at least what was driving the development forward. So the legitimation grounding educations, which were definite, uh, by definition outside the universities, were given a similar status without being a university, without having university library, without having university grants. Um, we had to build our own as much as we could, and you can imagine some problems about that. 95. Probably the most significant point here is the first one. In Sweden we did, of course, import whatever uh, Mrs. Thatcher and others had suggested or created, and we again wanted to be uh, doing the new public management better than anyone else. We would be, want to be more consequent. I, I'm not um, familiar with the exact um, British words for, for these. Those, we, we would call them buyers, those who are actually um, asking for bids and then select among them before they sign the contract with there is definitely a term for it, our term is Sherpara and Sherpara, the buyers they had on one hand the problem as we all know they didn't know exactly what they were buying because they didn't have good enough resources really to understand what they were asking for. They didn't have really resources to understand um, what would be quality, good enough quality. They turned reasonably, because that's modern culture, they turned to science. And what science said has been brilliantly illustrated in the presentation just before me but they were not able to be critical enough, so they would be, in a way, uh, prone to listen to what they had, a more generous, feel, difficult, different feeling of, could be good, and then, from that point of view, begin to structure care, structure resources for research, and structured trainings. They were, of course, and that was also, and still is, um, such an important issue on the political level as well. What is actually the truth, the measurable truth, the scientific truth, or other truths, that one has to take into account. Whether it is taken from medicine um, and whether it is taken from humanistic sciences, whether it's positivistic, quantitative, whether it is outcome, so much has been um, circling around outcome, efficacy, very much less has been understood or circulating around process. If something is efficient, how come it is? How did it happen that it just had the effect, if it had one? And this was especially um, Interesting, when in 2005 you had a series of, on one hand, new assessment of psychotherapy trainings, now 
not anymore by health and care authorities, but by university chancellor, by the state um, control of university quality. What's the meaning of academic? What's the meaning of being truly uh, research-oriented? What's the quantity of professors, chairs, or research um, laboratories needed in order to uh, pass as a university high-quality enterprise? And the rounds of control assessments that were instituted especially in psychotherapy training, but also in other more or less um, questioned uh, things like art high schools, like music high schools, etc. One would try to apply similar methods as those we know used in um, scientific press, meaning that you have reviews from experts, um, anonymous reviews, more or less anonymous. One did copy this by doing inspections, by asking for written materials from the training institutions. And then one would um, ask chosen experts to um, judge whether the institution was good enough or not. So all, of course, depended seriously and heavily on what experts to choose. And now came back unfulfilled revenge needs. Now came back also needs for readjusting the balance, the oppression as it was experienced by the psychodynamic um, dinosaurs, or uh, leagues, or whatever. And the experts we met on the first inspection, 2001, they were benevolent enough. They were of different mixed kinds of expertise and preferences and scientific understandings, and they would accept also that small private university college-like types would go on, have their examination rights, um, whereas on the second round of these assessments, the whole thing had changed. And now the proponents of the CBT therapy, the discussions which Jonathan so uh, enormously well illustrated, they come back in the kind of glasses that were used looking upon us. Were we really um, academic enough? Was it really scientific? Is psychoanalysis a science? And the answer this time was definitely no. Is there a difference between individual and family and group? I would say yes. They would say that's irrelevant. It's all too much influenced by psychodynamic ideas and concepts, which are outdated, etc., and so on. So what actually happened is that one introduced, of course, that there should be teaching about evidence-based therapies. But it, it was taken a bit further. It was even written that there should be evidence training. And how actually evidence training would be understood was impossible. And I maintain it's just demagogy is just transferring a concept from a field where it may apply, provided it's done in a good way, um, 
but it was transferred to as if pedagogic, the pedagogic we use would be evidence-based. And how could it? So here appears the phenomenon we were just hearing about in the previous lecture. Here came the un differentiated favoring of supposedly the only scientific, the only evidence-based forms of therapy. Psychoanalytic institutes were taken away from the right to give exams. Group analytic institute, the one I was running, was taken away from um, the right to give exams. And these who were left after that were mainly, not only, but mainly um, of cognitive behavior therapy models. We had very little um, resources, we had no time any comparable resources for funding uh, research to what exists in larger cultures and on the other side of the Atlantic and so on. And our way, our possibility research-wise to influence the things were very, very limited. Yet, at one of the universities in Linköping, namely, um, there is a group of psychotherapy research around Rolf Holmquist, who has recently actually repeated what we have known in psychotherapy research since long time ago. Namely that the the suggested differences between CBT and psychodynamic therapies were not proven to be. The paradox talked about a number of times, meaning that it's beyond doubt that psychotherapies of various forms and, and methods have effect, better effect than no treatment or controls um, on one hand, but comparisons in between them fails to show robust and existing differences in quality. And this was so absolutely in contrast to what has been claimed by the organizations for new public management, the organizations of controlling universities, the organizations of controlling treatment. During these years, there have also been created some 10 years before this year, or a bit, for, a bit earlier, there has been created a governmental control organization for medical treatment. Enormously needed, enormously valuable, because medical treatment is not only expensive, it's, only, it's also complicated and the research, research results are very often confusing. And that body has developed their own Swedish interpretation of the concept of evidence base. Please uh, come back in your thoughts to the three circles shown in the pre previous lecture. The three, the one meaning scientific support, the other meaning clinical experience, and the third meaning patients and health-seeking persons' preferences and needs. This new body of evaluating medical treatment has also been active and very interested to evaluate psychotherapeutic treatment. 
and they had evaluated according to one measure only, namely, that meta studies, the great bringing together of a great number of relevant studies, and then having a complicated statistic analysis of them. Meta studies is the only form of important scientific um, method that could be applied. And how much can be gained from meta studies concerning psychotherapy research? Well, Jonathan has commented on that. So, this was what made me <laughs> put the title of, or the metaphor of the tide and the tide waves coming and going on uh, this beach of mine. And the expected result from Lin Chirping that one couldn't prove at all scientific support for the a distortion of the whole treatment field did, in the Swedish way, result in a commission that should re-evaluate um, how much distortion has really uh, soaked the Swedish scenery. How far that commission has worked and what will be the result I don't know. Hanna was very optimistic about it. She may be right. I hope she is right. But um, things don't happen that quick. But the third circle, what um, citizens would want, what they prefer, the needs of the help-seeking ones, was illustrated in one of the more uh, important radio programs assessing social phenomena, and then it was pinpointed, I mean like, you know, when one really attacks in the media a phenomenon, that time one was attacking restlessly the dominance of CBT. Not that CBT in itself would be eradicated, but that it would be reduced to a true kind of possibility for change and that resources would be much more equal. We had some sense in the beginning, 1975, 1985, we did not really um, work out models that were inclusive enough or respectful enough or based on knowledge enough. But the uh, tide wave we have witnessed since then must be again changing. And by choosing the metaphor, I have uh, suggested that if the metaphor is valid, okay, the tide will come again. Thank you.